Check this out. With this approach, you'll be able to deploy your custom GPT actions with one command and be able to use them up to 2 million times a month for free using Google Firebase. With this command, I can deploy my code and start using it as a GPT action right away. Firebase deploy. Deploy is complete, and now we can flip over to the GPT and use it. Here we go, it created a nice elemental, and now we're gonna put it into Home Brewery using my action, which is deployed as a cloud function in Firebase. Awesome, it just used my custom action that I created to create this monster stat block on Home Brewery. So let me walk you through how to actually set this up on your own. To deploy our GPT actions, we're gonna be using Firebase, which is a platform that helps with all sorts of application development, but we'll be using a specific feature called Cloud Functions, which is gonna make it really easy for us to deploy these GPT actions and not have to worry about the scalability of the whole thing. To get started with Firebase, we'll go to firebase.google.com and hit sign in. I'll go ahead and sign in, and this will be my first time logging in with this account. So I've logged into my account, and now I'm gonna hit get started, and then I will add a new project. Come up with a name for the project, let's say Monster Brew. I like to also edit this ID so that it's something more memorable. Sure, we can have Google Analytics. The cool thing with Firebase is that it's a big set of development features, so you could start with cloud functions, but then you could expand into web hosting, having a database, and more. So sure, we'll accept Google Analytics, create a project, and just wait for a moment for it to get created. Okay, the new project is ready, continue. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create an app, and in our case, it's gonna be a web app. We don't need hosting right now because we're just using cloud functions. So you should copy this command to install Firebase on your computer, and then you'll be able to use it to deploy the application. If you're totally new to this, you should install VS Code, which is this editor that I'm using, and Node.js on your computer in order to run these commands. Let's start from scratch. I have an empty folder that I'm in, and I'm gonna go ahead and do npm init minus y, that's going to start my project. Next, we'll copy over that Firebase command and run that as well. While that's installing, we can go back here and go to the console. Let's take a closer look in the build tab for functions. To use functions, you do have to upgrade your project's billing plan, but there is a very generous allowance in terms of the free tier. So you could run up to 2 million functions for free per month. When you compare this to something like Zapier, you can only run 100 tasks a month for free. I've been thinking about creating a platform that would make building and deploying these custom GPT actions much simpler. So if you think this would help you out, let me know in the comments below. And I'd love to hear the sort of use cases that you're working with where this would be useful to you. So we'll go ahead and upgrade our project billing. This doesn't actually mean that we're paying anything. Google just has the ability to charge us in case we go over that free limit. Agree and continue. We're in the US. You can go ahead and add your credit card information. So you can go ahead and set a budget, although this isn't gonna do much because it's just gonna warn you. It'll just go over the budget if it uses up those resources. So we'll continue. It says purchase, but it's just going to charge us based on our usage. And as you saw, the free tier is pretty generous. Now we can go back to functions, get started. So we'll copy over this install command that'll install Firebase tools. Before we actually do this Firebase init, we're gonna to wanna to sign into our Firebase account from the command line. So we'll run Firebase login. It'll open up the browser and let us log in there. So I'll select my email with which I created this account, hit allow, and Firebase CLI login successful. So now if we run Firebase login, we can see that we're actually signed in. Now we can go ahead and run that Firebase init command. All we need is functions, so I'm gonna hit space and enter. We'll use an existing project. We'll use that Monster Brew project that I just created. It's gonna go ahead and set up functions for us. Let's just use JavaScript in our case, and we'll just keep it simple for now. Sure, we'll install dependencies. Firebase initialization complete. So now if we look in this functions folder, we'll see an index.js, and this will have an example function to use so you know how to structure your code. I'm gonna go ahead and copy over the function that I've previously created because the focus of this video is showing you how to deploy these functions. So this is the same code that I used in my other video where I showed you how to create GPTs using actions and knowledge retrieval. You'll see I have two functions here. One is to create homebrew, and the other is the privacy policy, which we'll use to satisfy OpenAI's requirement that every public GPT has to have a privacy policy. You can find this code on GitHub, which I'll link in the description below. So now that we're here, we can go ahead and use Firebase deploy to deploy this cloud function. 
I ran into a couple of errors which had to do with specific dependencies that I was using in my code, but it doesn't relate to Firebase directly, so I went ahead and skipped over that part. Now that I fixed my dependencies, I'm gonna go ahead and do Firebase deploy one more time. We see it's creating the cloud functions. So I did run into an error when trying to deploy this. So if you go back to the functions page, you will see the different functions, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one so that it deploys it from scratch. And it looks like in my case, it's having an error even deleting the function. I'm gonna try something a little different and just rename the function so that it can get deployed. All right, now that we renamed the function, looks like it successfully deployed them. It's gonna show you the URL of the functions that you created, and this is what you're gonna use in your GPT action. Now when I refresh this page, we can see this create homebrew one function, which has deployed successfully. There's one more important detail which we need to discuss, which is that Firebase Cloud functions are deployed as private by default, which means that you need to have a Google authentication token to use them. Since we're planning to use this cloud function in a public GPT, the easiest way for us to do that is gonna to be to make the cloud function public so that anybody can call that API. In order to do that, we actually have to use the gcloud command line interface. I'll put a link in the description below to this page, which will show you how to install the gcloud CLI. Once you've installed the CLI, you can go ahead and log in. This will be the same login as your Firebase account, and it'll once again take you to the browser. So we'll log in with our email, allow, now that we're authenticated with Google Cloud, we can go ahead and list our project, and then we can go ahead and set the project to the one that we're working with. This is the project ID, not the project number. Now we can run this command, which will change the policy on our cloud function and enable anybody to call it. And we'll change it on the privacy policy as well. Now that you've created and deployed your function, you can use it inside of your GPT. You'll also need an open API spec. You should check out my full video on using actions and knowledge retrieval in your GPTs to see how to set that up. Keep in mind, this approach is not your best option for most actions use cases. In fact, most services that you might wanna use with actions usually have an API already. So you should just configure your actions to use that API directly rather than going through your cloud function. This is gonna save you time and money setting up and maintaining these cloud functions. Additionally, if you wanna run some code to transform your data before you send it to the API, chances are you can do that using the code interpreter inside of GPTs. That means you don't have to write your custom code and run it as a cloud function. You can just use the built-in code functionalities of GPTs. And in the case that you have your own code or service that you wanna interact with, you should just have an API on that. And cloud functions may or may not be the best option for you to deploy that API. So when is this cloud function approach relevant? You should do this in cases where you wanna interact with a service that does not have an API. So in my case, when I'm talking to home brewery, it doesn't have an API. So I have to go to the website through a web crawler and interact with it. That's why I need this cloud function to exist. You might also wanna take this approach if you wanna use some kind of code libraries that are not available inside of Code Interpreter in the GPTs. So this approach is only relevant for specific use cases and most of the time you want to be calling a service API directly. I'm really curious to hear in the comments below what sort of use case you're working with to see if cloud functions are actually relevant in that situation. Like what sort of actions are you creating and using in your GPTs? The other thing to consider with Google Cloud is that there is no limit on your budget, so you really have to stay on top of things and disable your cloud functions if you're reaching a cost that's unacceptable. Also remember that if you make changes to your function, you have to update that open API spec so that your GPT knows about the changes that you made. Check out this video to continue learning more about GPTs and what you can do with them. I'll see you there.